Okay. Y'all ready? All right. Intro. There's a star in the east on Christmas morn. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. It will lead to the place where the Savior's born. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your lambs. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your ears and leave your rams. Rise up, shepherd, and Take good heed to the angel's words. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. You'll forget your flocks, you'll forget your herds. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your lambs. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your ears and leave shepherd and follow, 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 rise up shepherd and follow, follow the star of Bethlehem, rise up shepherd and follow, 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 rise up shepherd and follow. very beautiful you guys want to have any any intro to that song or outro uh, that was uh, Tyrone Smith that he sang two songs or recorded two songs with us okay Tyrone sorry about the the audio <laughs> they didn't do him justice well I don't know about you all back there but if you were up here and you could hear it was absolutely beautiful I mean it was great that's, is that going to be on the CD too? Yes. On the CD? Awesome. That's awesome. Good morning, Indian Nations. Good to see everybody here this morning. As always, um, it's a wonderful day when we're, we're able to gather here at church and be together as one. Will you all please bow your heads as I pray? Open us up in prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for giving us this time to come together, God. Please, God. Please, God, take our, our praises and our worship, Lord. And, um, God, we love you. And we wish that we could glorify you more, God. Please, God, give us strength. Give us the ability to glorify you as much as we possibly can, God. We thank you, God, for the love, for the grace and the mercy that you show us, that you give us, God. Please, God, help us to remember that each and every single day that we live our lives, God. Please, God, continue to bless our church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I sound really good in this mic today. It's like my deep tones are out there. Hello? Sounds good. As always, we invite you to um, each and every Sunday, we invite you to Sunday school. Um, Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. We've got great discussions going on down there, learning about God, getting closer to God. So please join us for Sunday school if you all are able to. Every Sunday morning at 11, we have our morning worship service. Tuesdays, we have our lady, we have, uh, this Tuesday, we have a ladies planning meeting. And Wednesday nights, we always have our 7 p.m. services. Last Last Wednesday, we didn't have service, but we, those will resume again this Wednesday. Coming up this Wednesday, oh, this Wednesday, we have our Around the World Mission Dinner. So please come to that. 
please bring food. Um, the sign-up sheet, I think Kim is doing the sign-up sheet. And um, look forward to that every time we have the Around the World Mission Dinner. I think Lois Hobson might have started that years and years ago. It was Lois, and man, that, that's been a great tradition that we've had, had, had here at Indian Nations, so please come out to that. Next Sunday afternoon is going to be an opportunity for caroling. So please see the music team for information. And then we've got our live nativity scene, so please volunteer for that. The sign up is downstairs. There's a sign up poster for the live nativity on the bulletin board, which happens on December 18th. And a children's activity will be on December 14th. But we had a great nativity scene last year. A lot of good fellowship. We met a lot of people that came by to the church. We fellowshiped with a bunch of people, ministered to some people. Great time to have that nativity. So please come out and join us for the nativity again. CDs, flash drives, and a link are available for Indian Nations Baptist or Indian Nations Christmas music. Any donation goes to the cost of production. Please ask Angela for any information you all need. And then the Christmas reading guide is available. Digital and printed copies are available for your use. The yellow booklets, and those are, I wore some up here, but they're downstairs for you all to, to get. We also have um, a lot of food left over from the children's program that we used to have where um, there's food donated here, and that is available for you all. If you all wanna take some of that food, it's downstairs on a table and we do use some of that for our pantry and our pantry is a great outreach for the community but there is some available for you all as well so if you all want to take some of that food go ahead and take that food as well this time i'm going to ask that debbie come up and do our prayer emphasis good morning, good morning. we want to continue to remember kyle and the Gip family um, archie uh, Jeremy's family and Sally's family as they experienced a loss this week. Others with health issues or recent surgeries are David, uh, Sally, Sharon, Darlene, Oscar, Letha, Carlos. Um, we want to also remember Jeremy's dad, Robbie, Al and his family, Jonathan, Stephen, and Jackie. Uh, those with, we, I think we have a lot with flu or COVID or, or just getting over it. We want to remember those. Um, the Alangas and other missionaries around the world, the Greens and the Culberts. So if you will bow your head with me as we pray for these. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne to bring these precious ones before you with the different needs that they might have. Our heart is heavy for Kyle and his family as we know the doctors haven't given him much time and we just pray for peace and comfort and strength for that family and um, we pray for those others with health issues, RG, David, Sally, Sharon, Darlene, Cause, Oscar, Letha, those that are um, recovering from flu or COVID or that may have it right now, we just pray a healing hand upon these bodies and make them whole again that they can be about your their servants business we pray that you'll be with the alungas and their missionary work they're doing there in africa we just pray for our church family to be there to support them through prayers as well as offerings just touch our hearts that we might support them in this way we pray for the greens and the work that they are doing in our association and we always want to lift up our pastor and his family and the work that he is doing here in our midst and the good messages that are coming from God to us. And we just thank you for these many things in our church family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, if you guys want to stand with me, uh, we're going to be on hymn 93.
through what I hear. Thanksgiving Day here, 
is we had some people come in toward the end, some ladies, and um, you know, I hadn't really seen them before, and um, but they wanted, you know, one of the things while we were serving their food was they were really thankful, and they just said, um, you know, God bless our church family for helping them and feeding them through the pantry. And, you know, one of them just said, you know, just bless you for that. It makes a really big difference. You know, I know we don't get a lot of feedback all the time and, and stuff, but, you know, just knowing that it is helpful to people, you know, I think it, I wanted to share that with everybody. So. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, okay, so I would like to ask Kelly to pray over our tithes and offerings, please. This time, uh, Jennifer has a presentation, uh, so we'll give the floor to her. We're going to watch a video uh, that has been in preparation for many years, in a sense. There is a movie called The Savior, and it's about the life of Christ, and it has been translated into... I think it's at least 42 languages globally and many of them are European, Eastern European, Middle Eastern countries that was filmed in originally in Arabic and so Muscogee is the first North American indigenous language that it was translated into. My dad just overheard someone or was just talking to someone about this project and he said, I want to do that. And so he, my Uncle Jack, and three other people completed the translation late in 2019. And so, of course, the pandemic slows things down. But um, in a very short amount of time, they were able to uh, record the Christmas scenes. And so it is here for you. And, you know, you see it, you want to share it. Please do that. It's in Muskogee. There are English subtitles and Muskogee subtitles or no subtitles. 
available, but we wanted to share it with you, you know, especially with my dad and Uncle Jack being, you know, from Indian Nations. This is something that, you know, came out of our ministry too. Halwi Ishte, Gabriel, Pujaje Hijagidamishit, Adudadish, Galilee Owen, Talova Nazareth, Hojifkin, Man Hukti Hunangwa Ajilagadi Shigut, Legadish, Joseph David Ahunapsen, Idin Vatagi Dadish, Ma Hukti Hojifka, Merit Uadish. He the Ste, Jokith Gonga, Jehovah Ijibagis, Hoktagi Ogatska, Shimondalin Jokmithkis, Mary Jibin Gahlats, Hazagi the Mazi, Heath Gonga, Jimojidos, Ishtinathis, Moment, Jibanojit, Jinhitchkathis, Moment Jesus, Hojifitchkathis, Ishtiathakir Omathis, Maholwi Mahat, Ipojin Hojif Hoyathis, Ima Fungida, Imioxidi Sigathis. Istowet, Jamo Medi, Honangwa, Ajilagayet Sigot Owat. Poe Fictor Jaga, Ijo Halagathis, Momen, Holy Maha, Enyichi, Ijo Kabidathis, Momen, Maitho Napsi, Jaga, Hizagadamazi, Ipoji, Hojif Hoyathis. Elizabeth Jinahamgi Hobuiwuji Ichki Dathanidos Hoktalidawa Ichos Sigon Gehojangez Haziabagen Imothibidos Hizagidamizi Nagi in Mungo Dayat Sigo Donga Jehovah Imadodgar OS Nakjagejitskat Momigas Jazzy, Jimmy Gomez got Momigas. Manita Omov, Caesar Augustus, Ahagan, who says a dish, Idelwa Oven, Ishti, Ahungat Huigas, Magin, Joseph, Nazareth, Talovan, Inga Bucket, Ayadish, Judea, Sosadish, David, Indalova, Bethlehem, Sosadish, Ishkisko Huzatin. Mary, I have a dad, Tin for the Gibiron, Isnaskizit Omadis, Manwila Rov, Honapsadanat Ugida, Isfatskadis. Chipingala, Obanaga, Hita, Fetchkida, a bugging, Isti Malagis, Isti a moga, a thakin, Mojnita, Ija thakin, Hisa Egypt. Hitchkis, David in the Loven, Ma Christ Bujazidos, Hia Ischingith Gadathis, Hobuiwaji Nakliska, Sabaklagin Ishi Jitskathis, Abuiga Imok Hombedan Ohwakan. Ayahanichigo, Abihit, Momin, Izagidamizi Nagi Momija, Hijagids, Abihagids. Holy is it? Umi hitchquidget. Hobi widget. Hitchkis maggot. Bomanados. Bohisaija. Christ. Ujazi. Asti jocks.
Okay, um, so now if you guys would like to open up your bulletins to the scripture reading part of our program, we got a good one today. It's going to be challenging. Uh, try to read along with me. <clears throat> uh, okay. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have observed and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, that life was revealed and we have seen it and we testify and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you so that you may also have fellowship with us and indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We who are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you for your Son, for your, for your holy plan, Lord, that we might be able to be with you for all eternity, Lord, that we will one day be in your presence and to praise you, God. Um, just continue to be with us and be with our pastor and allow us to encourage him and to, to be a blessing to him because he's blessing us, Lord. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Sound okay? All right. All right. <clears throat> well, Kirsten's doing okay. Um, she never had any bad symptoms. And so, all right. Um, our reading <clears throat> for this morning, I've actually preached out of this whole book in chapter one, uh, chapter two, three, four, except for five <clears throat> in chapter one. I've, I've referred to it several times, but uh, but it's important to to see what uh, what God has given us. And I kind of want to do a little series for Christmas. And I, I, I thought about it, and I thought, what, what can I call it? <clears throat> and so my, my series title is The Words or Blessings of Christmas. And so the first one we're going to look at is actually in the fourth verse, if you look there. And the word is joy. <clears throat> okay, when I, uh, when I think of Christmas, I, I think a lot about joy. <clears throat> and I, was heard, I heard Brother... Sam in Sunday school speaking about joy, and uh, I try, I've tried to understand the term that joy is like um, an expression that we carry, something that we show. People just know. You know they know when you're angry. Uh, they know when there's uh, an attitude. <laughs> but there's also that expression of joy. And it just shows. And so I want to just kind of build on that word uh, for this morning. But as we, as we pray, let's ask God's blessing upon his word. And as we look into this, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll share some things with you. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your love for us. And thank you for your promises, Lord, that are eternal. Lord, that give us great joy. And we can experience at any time, but as we look at this time of the season, we see joy in ways that show who you, who you truly are and how much you love us. Thank you again for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> when I look back at my life, I, I, I think about things that are sometimes personal to me. And a lot of times... I'm drawn back to my birthday, 
Christmas, my wedding day, and the births of my daughters. Those are some significant times uh, in my life. Um, <clears throat> I was looking the other day um, just at, on, my, on my phone. You know, you have your calendar and you can punch on the years or, and, it, and it brings up 12 months out of the year and I was just scrolling back to find my birth year and I just kept scrolling. I, sc I said, man, is it that far back? And so I kept scrolling all the way back to 1963 to see the day that I was born. It was on a Wednesday. I believe it was early in the morning, like 3, 3.15 on a Wednesday morning when I was born. And I try to think about all those significant things. But again, a lot of times I, at this time of year, I, I think a lot about what Christmas has meant to me. Because there were times in, in, in our lives that um, I wrote a little devotional a few years ago. I don't know what it was in, but I wrote one. And uh, <clears throat> I wrote about my dad. And I wrote about knowing some of the financial struggles we had growing up as kids. And uh, we lived in southeastern Oklahoma City. <clears throat> I actually kind of grew up in the in the Valley Brook area, in the Valley Brook neighborhood. How I many of you know where Valley Brook is, or if you you know the reputation of Valley Brook? You know, well back then there wasn't much there. Okay, there wasn't there wasn't all the triple X stuff going on there, or bingos, or you know things like that. It was just it was one store in a little neighborhood, and so that's kind of where I grew up for my first few years. After that, we moved to. A little bit further down on South Shields Boulevard but I always remembered Christmas because I again I knew where dad worked and sometimes I knew the financial strain that it, it was for him to provide for us because at that time dad was the only one working but during Christmas time Christmas was always a special time because I remember the times when we would get home and there would be like presents all over under the tree. And I would think, you know, tried to figure it out, how, how that happened, you know. And, and at that age, when I was young, you know, I, I was just a kid, I, I really thought Santa visited my home. Never thought, never could make that connection with dad, you know, being the trickster he was. And so, <clears throat> But, it, but what was odd was a lot of times he would deliver or the, 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 the presents and all the stuff under the tree would, would happen at midday. And that's what I kind of had a confusion about. I thought Santa always came at night, you know, when you were asleep. But we'd go to the store and we'd come back and, hey, there they were, you know, right there. So, well, you know, Santa must have been early or something. But I remember a bike. It was a yellow, it was called a yellow scorpion bike that I got. You know, if you know what a banana, banana seed is, you might know what that is. Had a long tail, a chrome, whatever that thing was in the back. <clears throat> and I thought that was one of the coolest things that I ever had. Never had a bike. I knew how to ride one, but I saw that yellow scorpion bike sitting there. And I just, I, and I knew it was for me. And other things. My sisters got things, my brother got things, and, but those are some of the memorable things that I remember. I remember I got one at, at, when I was a little older. <clears throat> it, was a, it was like a little light board, and you put little bitty pegs in it, and it lit those up, and you can make designs. You remember, you remember that? I can't remember what it was called. Um, <clears throat> but when I got it, I opened it up, and Mom told me to put it up because we were getting ready to have dinner. I was wanting to play with it. Somewhere along that time period, within a year, uh, within a month, I'm mean, within within a few hours, somebody took it home, and that weren't that weren't my present. You know, I couldn't find it. We looked everywhere. Somebody stole it. You know, that's the only thing I could think of. But when you think about times and, and significant things like that, <clears throat> I always remember the joy. And like Wednesday night, I was sitting there in my recliner. I was watching um, 
Well, Kirsten was sick. She, you know, we've, we've had the quarantine in her, her in her room. And, uh, but she's okay, she's fine. And then Miranda was in her room. So I just sat there with the dog next to me, the cat on my, on my leg, and we were watching the Charlie Brown Christmas. And, and, I, and, I, and I, every time I see that, you know, we have it on our DVR and it's just, we can watch it any time, but when you watch it during Christmas, it's kind of a little bit more special. Because I think about my childhood. I think about me being a young kid and it brings back some of those memories and it, and it just kind of gives me a, a, a sense of joy, just thankful, happy, that even though we may have struggled in those days and times, God has blessed. Again, there were times that I saw, you know, I experienced being the oldest child that you know, there was a struggle t at times. Sometimes mom and dad would get in kind of an argument about our financial situation. And sometimes that really bothered me. <clears throat> but overall, when, when, I, when I saw what God was able to do in our lives and in our family, I look back and I can feel and feel rested spiritually because I know what happened was a great sense of joy to me. And so I want to focus on that word <clears throat> joy. What, what brings us joy? What can bring us joy? When we look at the scriptures, here in the first book of John, chapter 1, <clears throat> let me bring my notes up here on my, <clears throat> my phone. There is, in this particular chapter, in this opening letter, there is a, John, John speaks of a, an eternal dimension, okay? There's something eternal about what he's ready to speak of. You can see this kind of in early in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, God. You can see it in his, in his letter or his writings in, in the book of John. This is, <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And in this particular chapter, he starts out much in the same way. He says, what was from the beginning? You know, if, you, if, you, <clears throat> if you look at it and you read it a little different, sometimes it can give you a different meaning. And in this particular one, there, there, there's one, and, and I think this kind of results in what a lot of people see in our world is a, is, is a world of unbelief. Because it says, if, if you phrased it this way, what was, what was from the beginning? It asks a question. <clears throat> and I think the world, just like that Charlie Brown Christmas episode, you know, Charlie Brown was all flustered, frustrated because he didn't understand. You know, he, he thought it was about metal trees or wooden trees or whatever it was. You know, there was nothing that, that could make sense to him until Linus got up there on the stage and began to orate the story of Christmas. Because when you look at the scriptures, it says, what, what, what was from the beginning? Makes a statement rather than a question. Because what was from the beginning was an eternal existence. Jesus just wasn't thought up as a sense of an emergency. Oh no, man has sinned. Now what are we going to do? Man has walked away from us. God, God, God didn't have to throw together a plan. You see, Jesus has always been. And this is a good apologetic for you to understand. If you want, you know, if you want to get your bulletin and write some things down, the first, that first little phrase, not the whole first verse, but that first little phrase, what was from the beginning is an eternal existence. Jesus has always been. Again, he hasn't, he wasn't just thought up. He wasn't the one in case of an emergency, break the glass, you know, pull the emergency cord. He wasn't that according to Scripture. But what he was and what we do understand is that he has always been. John chapter 17, verse, let's turn over there, John chapter 17. And this is kind of what we know as Jesus' prayer to God on behalf of his disciples himself and others. 
If you look there in verse 4, he says, I have glorified you on the earth by completing the work you gave me to do. That was his purpose. That was the plan. And then look what he says. He says, now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world existed. A good apologetic. People say, well, you know, why did Jesus come along? Well, he didn't just come along. He's always been. This little phrase, what was from the beginning, speaks of that eternal dimension as an eternal existence. And that's one of those things that we can put together in this culmination, in like an, ingre an ingredients bowl that gives us joy. Again, I, I, I like to be around home and family, and, and sometimes, you know, my wife, she, before we left to go to Kansas City last week, you know, she was, she was putting together the, the pumpkin pies, you know. That smell, that, that warmth of the oven and that, that pumpkin smell, that pumpkin spice smell. She was making those pies. And, oh, man, it smelled good. She made a little extra for the house, you know, to, for us to snack on. But all those ingredients by themselves probably just, just taste terrible. You know, a little bit of flour for the, you know, for the crust. Probably, you, know, you can't eat flour by itself. I can't really, I can't really enjoy pumpkin by itself. I, I really can't enjoy the, the ingredients by themselves. It doesn't taste great. But when they come together, it tastes good. Especially with a little whipped cream topping. We got the whipped cream out and started spraying. Of course, you can hold the can upside down and try to spray that whipped cream on there and it just barely throws anything out. Man, I was shaking that can. I was trying to hurry up just to get enough whipped cream on that pumpkin pie. Got enough on there. Tasted great. But here we see this passage again. What was from the beginning speaks of Jesus' eternal existence. He's always been. And at the part with the, all these other ingredients that we'll look at this morning, that's what verse 4 speaks of. That your joy may be complete. Now, let's look at the second one. From verse 1, that little second part right after the first five, uh, five words there, it says, what we have heard, and again, this is speaking of the beginning, but it goes into the second point that we want to make here. What we, have, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have observed and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, that life was revealed and we have seen it, and we testify and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. Who was it that was revealed to us? Was it the law? Partially. Was it the prophets? Partially. Because they became the tools, they became the instruments of what we know and what we see in the eternal existence of Christ. With that, he says, this is what we have heard. This is what we have seen. This is what we have observed. And this is what we have touched. And that person is in Christ. It's all about who Jesus is. Now you think about Jesus. For a lot of people, Jesus was just a man. They think of him just as a man who had probably elevated powers an elevated personality, uh, things about him that were different than other folks. He was just a good superhuman being. But that's not what the scriptures tell us. The scriptures tell us that he was unique in very different ways. Even identified himself with being God. I and the Father are one. He speaks of himself as being the servant. He speaks of himself as being the one who would come and take away the sins of the world. He was unique, sinless, judge. He was a judge, a righteous judge. But all things that speak of Christ speak of him being the lamb, 
the lamb that would go to the slaughter for the sins of man. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. You know, we, we talked about it last year. But we'll talk about it a little bit more this year. About why, why the shepherds were keeping the flocks by night there close to Bethlehem. Jesus became our lamb to take to the slaughter for the sins of the world. But again, he says, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have observed and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, that life was revealed and we have seen it again in Christ Jesus. And we testify and declare to you that the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. Through him we have hope. Through him we have promise. Through him we have power. Through him we have purpose and meaning to life. Now the third thing. If you look at verse 3, he says, What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you. What is that? That's the, pro that's, that's the, per or that's the, that's the process of the gospel, isn't it? What does he say again? What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you. And anyway, it's, it's something worth talking about. It's something worth spreading. It's something worth telling somebody else that God loves you. It's a plan for your life. Something worthy. What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you. That's the gospel. That's evangelism. So what we, what we see in this is not only is his, he has this eternal existence or eternal in his life, but he's also eternal in his purpose. The message of the gospel will never change. It'll never change to satisfy a generation. We live in a time in a, we, we live in a world that's just more and more magnified on the media, in media, that sometimes I'm just like, I get jaw dropped. Like people actually think this way? People actually act this way in our world today. But we have to again realize that the message Jesus is eternal in his purpose. There, always, there will always be just one way. There will all, always be just one Jesus. Not so many other things out in the world that you see out there today. He's eternal in his purpose. What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you. And this is, again, here's the purpose. So that you may have fellowship along with us. I'm glad I have fellowship with you. I might not know everything about you. I might not know yet. I might not know everything that goes on in your life yet. But we're going to work towards that. Because again, once, once we can get to where we can be safe, and if you feel, if you feel safe with us coming, you know, <clears throat> probably wasn't a good week this week because of my wife being sick, but we'd like to come visit you. We'd like to come to your home, maybe some evening. Just sit down and talk. We don't have to eat. You don't have to, unless you want to. But we'd like to get into your homes and just visit with you and just pray with you. And then you have, have you pray for us. That's the fellowship that we can enjoy because of Jesus Christ. We don't have to sit there and discuss Sooner football. Oklahoma State football. If you're Oklahoma State, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, you know, it's okay. We don't have to sit there and discuss whether Republican views or, or, or trumping Democratic views. We don't have to sit there and talk about things of that. But we can come together and have fellowship together because of our differences. We might not be Crete, might not be Seminole, we might not be such and such. You know, my wife, you know, Pawnee. It took me a while to get used to their ways because I was just a creek guy. I didn't, I didn't even go to our ceremonial things on the creeks, on the creek side. But man, when I stepped into that arena of a different tribe, I learned to love her even more and what they, what they practice in their life and in their tribe. Beautiful things. 
but we all have differences. But because of the gospel, we can have fellowship one with another. Isn't that good? I mean, through through thick and thin, just like we're a married that's just like we're a married group here. We travel, we take steps along the way in the ways of difficulty to minister to each other. We walk together in times of deep anguish. We walk together in times of sickness and in hell. Those in poverty and prosperity, we, we, we walk together as a church to minister to, to hurt with, to get up again with, to keep that fellowship alive. I, I, I love, I, I, again, I, I'm thankful every day that I have a church like you, a family like you, that I know that you're praying for me, that I know that we're praying for each other. Anything that comes up, we're praying. That's sweet. That's sweet to me. I enjoy that. That gives me peace. That gives me joy. And the last thing that we see with that, he says, again, with the third point, eternal in his purpose. We see the gospel. We also have the fellowship one with another. But look at the last thing in verse 3. He says, and indeed, our fellowship is with the Father. <clears throat> you know, we, we do good to get along with each other, right? <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I have, well... My, fam my, my, immediate, my, my family, where I came from, um, was mom and dad, and there were five of us, five kids. <clears throat> we didn't always get along. You know, we weren't the ha uh, hunky-dory, happy, Brady Bunch type of family, <clears throat> okay? My brother and I would fight. We had fist fights all the time. So much and so bad that my dad bought us boxing gloves, because we knew if we got mad at each other, dad said, okay, you're going to fight, we'll put the gloves on. Because we'd end up bloody noses, bloody lips, you know, whatever, and, and punching, you know, at, at, at a young age. Probably a little bit older than Kai, but, you know, we, we would go to fisticuffs, you know. Sometimes we would get mad at my sisters. One time we got mad at my sisters. My, my, one of my sisters got one of these aluminum, little aluminum oven, baking ovens, you know, during Christmas time. We got mad at her. She got mad at us. So we got that little aluminum oven that was, well, it was so big, it's about, about, about so. And we set it in the yard and we rode our bikes over it. Crushed it. Because we was mad at her. You know? But that's just kids. But we have we 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 do it, we 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 know deep down inside we loved our family. I would, you know. We take up for my sisters. When we were in elementary school, me and my brother chased this boy down that was picking on my sister. We chased him down the road for a couple of blocks and punched him, beat him up because he was messing with my sister. She was just in kindergarten on the bus at Eufaula. <clears throat> I was in the seventh grade. My sister was being picked on by these boys on the way home, we sat behind, we sat way in the back, and those boys started picking on my sisters. So we went up behind them, punched them a few times on the bus. And you know what? The bus driver never said a word to us because they were bullies. But we had a fight on the bus. Left them there in the bus, bleeding. But that's what we, we, we loved our sisters like that. We didn't always get along. But the purpose of all that is to say, again, we might not, we, we don't go to fighting here. We don't go to arguing because we love the Lord. But we are different. And as a pastor, I have your back. I pray for you every day. I can see where you sit from this pulpit. I can see where you're at. And I can envision you where you're at. I wish some of you would scoot up to the front sometime, but it's okay. <clears throat> but I see you, and I pray for you. I love you. 
It is simply because the love of the Lord is in me and he's in you. The love of God transcends all those things, all those differences, all those little bitty things. And it makes us lovable to each other. But most importantly, it makes us lovable to him. So what we see in this passage, again, is that God has a, an existence that's eternal. It wasn't just thought up at the spur of a moment. But we also see it in his life. The purpose of his life was to die in order for us to have eternal life. But then thirdly, we see that the reason he died was to give us a life, a changed life, a life that's based in his work for us. Because we have love for one another and we have love for the Father. And then in the, in the, in the last part it says, <clears throat> with his son, also Jesus Christ. And in verse four, it says, we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. When you look at the historical significance of this letter, it wasn't always in good times like we experience today. I mean, we can go, Go to Walmart, go wherever. Me and Miranda went to Tulsa yesterday. We went to an art market. Do whatever we wanted to do. Go where we wanted to go. But in the days in which this letter was written, persecution was heavy upon the church. Persecution was at, at levels that we, that we don't really understand today. The church was always target number one. The believers were always target number one. And those who propagated the gospel were target number one. It was not an easy time. When at any moment someone would come through that back door and arrest everybody here. Throw me up against the wall. Stone me. That was a day in the life of the early believers in the early church. But yet, John writes with a heart convinced that he knows the Lord, that he knows the Lord through, through Jesus Christ. He saw everything. He was witness to what happened. And he says, we write these things so that our joy may be complete. I often walk around and think a lot of times, I, I, I just sometimes have think parties for myself, whether it be outside <clears throat> early in the morning or late at night. I go out, and sometimes the only one that listens to me, I mean, when we're outside, it, it, you know, is our dog. I'm walking him, telling him to do certain things, you know, and I'll just start talking to him. So, man, isn't this night beautiful? Look at the beautiful stars. And then I pray for you. But times that we're in can be overwhelming at times. They can be trying. They can be They, they can be competing for your soul. They can be competing for your heart. Let me ask you, keep this eternal dimension in your focus during this holiday season. Keep it in focus because that's what really matters. That's what really counts. And that, folks, is the Word of God. What we see in this very first chapter will keep your footing on a firm foundation. It'll keep your footing where the sands of opinion will not swallow you. You'll be on a firm foundation. His existence is eternal. 
His purpose is eternal. The fellowship we have with one another in the Lord is eternal. And these three things show us that we can have these in our life and have overflowing joy. You know, just by <clears throat> these flowers here. You know, when I looked up here this morning, I thought, oh man, something's missing. You know, because I'm always used to seeing something right here. But then you see these flowers, these Christmas flowers. They speak well of something, don't they? They don't speak of Easter, do they? They don't speak of the Independence Day or Labor Day. They speak of Christmas. And just like we, we have a, a life of joy that can be expressive of who God is in our life all the time. Just as that shows that it's Christmas time. It's a peaceful time. It's a time of God's love. It's a time that's precious. Let us live like that in our daily walk. And let you experience joy. Even in the midst of hardship, even in the midst of trouble, God can be your source of joy. Let me ask you to bow your heads for a moment. <clears throat> let me just simply ask you a simple question. You can just raise your hand, but just say, I want my cup of joy filled up this morning. I need my cup of joy filled this morning. Would you simply just raise your hand? God will do it. Amen. A lot of hands all over. Lord, fill my cup that I might be joyous these days. Looking forward that my heart would be full of joy. Can you make that your prayer this morning? Father, we thank you that you are our source of joy. What we've seen in this chapter, your eternal existence, your purpose, your plan, your fellowship with you gives us joy. Because we go through trying times here, but we know what's on the other side. Thank you for loving us. And as these have raised their hand, Lord, may it be our time to just simply pray to have you fill us with joy. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have a song. If you feel like you need to come and just pray here at the front, you come. Respond in that way. Let God fill you this day. In Jesus' name, you come. Thank you.